What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I wanna talk about the LFE plus main setting, also commonly called double bass in some receivers, what it does and why turning this setting on might not get you the best sound. So I've actually wanted to talk about the LFE plus main stuff for a while now, and I'm happy to finally get around to it. It's a setting that I see talked about quite a bit on forums and in YouTube comments, and can be confusing to some people, so I hope this video will make things a bit more clear. I will be going over some measurements in Room EQ Wizard in a minute that show you the effects of turning on LFE plus main in my home theater, so you'll be able to see some of the issues that may come up for yourself. Now before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell icon so you never miss out on a new video. I also have links in the description to calibration tools worth considering along with a list to my full home theater setup. Now these are affiliate links which do help support the channel when you use them. So what does the LFE plus main setting do? It's actually pretty simple. It basically duplicates the bass signal and sends it to both the front left and right channels as well as the subwoofer so you have both play playing the same bass and tones at the same time. Well, that's the theory behind it at least, and it might sound great on paper because more bass, but it brings up some issues that aren't easily corrected. For one thing, the front left and right speakers need to be set to large in order to turn on the LFE plus main setting in most receivers, meaning that you'll more than likely end up sending a full range signal to those speakers without a crossover. A lot of consumer level speakers may be rated to go down to 30 or 40 hertz, for example, but the actual usable response down to those frequencies often isn't desirable due to placement within the room. Now, you could move your front left and right speakers around to achieve better response in the bass region, but this will often be at the expense of messing up your overall stereo sound imaging and could also introduce issues in the mid to high frequencies as well. Also something to consider, producing frequencies down to those really low octaves requires a lot more amplifier power, which puts more strain on your receiver and can actually end up making your system sound worse in a lot of cases. Now this becomes less of an issue if you're running separate amplifiers, but it's still something to think about. Subwoofers have dedicated amps for a reason and don't need to worry about trying to power a full multi-channel system along with the bass drivers. And I'd honestly wager that most speaker systems benefit greatly from being crossed over at 60 hertz or higher, but this will depend on your specific situation and your room. Something that I always like to reiterate is that the best crossover point for your speakers and subwoofer is more often than not dictated by your room itself, not the capabilities of your speakers and subs. Okay, okay, enough talking. Let's go ahead and dive into Room EQ Wizard and I'll show you what turning on the LFE plus main setting does in my home theater. All right, so we have REW opened up here and I went with a flat response for this part of the video just because when I start enabling things, it's just gonna be a little easier to see what's going on, where are we losing output and things like that. This will work with a house curve. You'll still run into issues here and there, but it's gonna be relatively the same thing. So if we just start out, this is my baseline measurement here. It's a flat curve, like I said. It's up here in the 85 dB range because I have both the left and right front channels playing at the same time. So you get a little more output there. That's important because we wanna see how it interacts with both of our mains playing the same time. We're essentially checking the alignment of both the subwoofers and the mains now. So if you see my notes over here, my fronts were set to small, my crossover 110 hertz, that's what I figured out's the best in my room. And then the base is just set to LFE. If we look at our graph here, relatively flat across the board, really nice looking. I went over and turned on just the left plus rights. Now these are set to full range. If you look at my notes here, front set to large, crossover full range, bass set to LFE. I've turned the subwoofers off, so no subs are playing here. And if you look, this is our frequency response without any subwoofers at all. So this is, if we had no subs and we're just playing our speakers at full range, this is what we would get and it's not great. We should be hitting around that 85 dB mark like we were hitting on the flat, but uh, we're not. And that's mainly a few things. The speakers themselves don't have the output down to 40 Hertz, even though they're rated down to 40 Hertz. And then also the placement in the room has a big impact on this graph here as well. We could mess around with placement and everything, but then we would end up messing up our stereo pair essentially. You know, we might end up with something that's off to the right or off to the left, and we don't want that. The next logical step would be to engage LFE plus main and turn the subs on. If we look here, 
Okay, this is not as bad as you may be thinking because we have this massive dip. This is related to our main speakers here. And the problem is gonna be, you're gonna see as I go through all these different measurements here, we can kind of mitigate it a little bit. We're gonna have issues elsewhere in the frequency response, which isn't what we want at all. If we just quickly compare the red line here, which is our reference measure, that's the flat curve, this is not anything you want. This is basically what they call a suck out, which is a lack of bass right here. You have all this bass up here around the 82 decibel region, and then all of a sudden down here, you're right at 68 and a half hertz. You've gone down to 58 dB. That's about a 20 decibel reduction, which is massive and definitely noticeable. So in this instance here, the fronts are set to large, crossovers full range, bass set to LFE plus main. I put the distance in there because I played around with distance a little bit, trying to mitigate this null here. As you can see, I started by taking distance away. I don't know actually what happened to my other measurements here. I went down to 12.7, but basically this just started getting worse. If we look here at the blue line, our LFE just started sloping down here. This kind of just moved it over this way, the orange line, and we started losing output right here. Once I went down to 12.7, it just created this kind of massive cavern here of, of no base. I started going the other way, which is 17.7, and if we turn on the 16.7, seven real quick. Again, you see the green line here, the 17.7 just kind of moved it over a little bit. We got a little more output here. We lost some here. And that's just kind of the trend that you'll see going from 17.7 to 18.7. We started creating these peaks and valleys and everything here. Again, not what we want. We want that smooth response we had with the red line. So going from 18.7 to 19.7, again, we've, we've regained this output, but we, we have lost output here as well. So after that, I was not happy happy whatsoever with this response. So I decided, you know what, let me try just adding delay to the mini DSP two at a time. I tried using the alignment tool here. It didn't really do anything for me at all. Basically the calculations that it was doing, I input those and it was vastly different from the predicted response that it gave me. I didn't feel like that was usable at all. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave this reference measure up because remember this is exactly what we wanted to get. I started adding basically two milliseconds to the mini DSP. So I added two to each of the subwoofers and the results really weren't that much better. And just for reference, I actually returned the distance back to 16.7 because it really just didn't make sense to add distance here on top of distance in the mini DSP when we could do it all in the mini DSP. As I start turning these on, you'll see that things didn't get that much better. Now we don't have that massive null that we did, which, you know, one could argue is better than that, you know, the blue line here, but it's still Still not that red line, which is what we want, or at least very close to that. So that was with two milliseconds. With four milliseconds, if we compare the two, again, this is just getting better in some regards, worse than some. And with six, we started creating this massive suck out here. Eight, well, we got rid of the massive suck out, but it's it's still like we got this cavern here. Going up to 10, this is okay, but just gonna create some kind of really bad variation that we don't want. We're losing base here, gaining base here. This is gonna be really difficult to EQ out because we'd end up having to go back and forth between the mains and the subwoofer trying to figure out where the EQ is. Moving on to 12, uh, slightly better than the one at 10, but still not what we want. I went to a 14 millisecond delay on the mini DSP and yeah, no good here at all. Then a 16 millisecond delay, again, no good. 18, we're just starting to create more issues. And then moving on to a 20 millisecond delay and you could see we're just starting to create these peaks and valleys here almost consistently and that's not what we want at all. All in all, going through all of that, I could not find a response I was happy with. And as you can see, this is a relatively simple process here to get this response, which would honestly sound better than any of these. Now sound is subjective, but knowing that you have this and then you're now dealing with something like this, so essentially I just settled on saying, hey, I cannot get a good response out of this. Anything that I'm happy with that I would be okay listening to. Personally, I would recommend is play around with the setting if you have REW, see what you get. But for the most part, setting your fronts to small, crossing them over 60, 80, 90, 110, whatever crossover point you end up with using maybe one of my previous videos to determine the best one for your room. And then just leaving your base set to LFE would be, in my opinion, the best way to go. So initially I had planned for 
this to be a tutorial video for those thinking of trying out the LFE Plus main setting for themselves, but as I was running through a bunch of different tests and measurements, I just could not get a frequency response I was happy with, as you probably saw when I went over the measurements. And it wasn't from a lack of trying. I spent the better half of two hours plus trying to figure out a way I could get a smooth response, but it just didn't happen. And the funny thing is, I pretty much knew that it wouldn't happen, but I still wanted to put in the time in hopes that it will help someone out there. I think this also brings up a really good point that sometimes people just don't want to hear. Enabling settings without having any idea what it's doing to your sound quality or frequency response just isn't a good idea. That's why I think if you really want to get the best sound quality out of your system that you can, a measurement microphone like the U-Mic 1 is worth every penny. Yes, it will also include investing time into learning the software and taking measurements too, but you'll end up with a much better understanding of your audio system, its limitations, and ways to overcome them, which I do think is ultimately an invaluable thing to have. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps this video reach more people. If you have any questions or comments about the LFE Plus main setting, please leave a comment down below. Or if you use this setting yourself and have found a way to make it work for you, then please leave a comment as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe something that I could try. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.